Hey guys, this is Srini and you're watching Python tutorial videos on my YouTube channel Python for Microscopist. This tutorial is a continuation of the last couple of uh, tutorials where I talked about Docker and uh, explained the reason why Docker is important even though you're uh, focused on uh, Python programming and just to quickly summarize it, well it's important because it makes your code portable, meaning you can publish your results and share your Docker container with anyone with the rest of the world and anyone should be able to run your code without worrying about all the other dependencies that codes typically come with. You know, uh, what libraries are you going to use? What operating system is it gonna work on? And so on. So, uh, in the last tutorial, again, I quickly explained about, uh, you know, the Docker file and how it actually uh, contains a few lines of code uh, to instruct, you know, uh, how a Docker image uh, needs to be created and how Docker image uh, can be built by using local repositories and if local repository is not available, how it looks into the cloud to download a required repository. When I say repository, for example, uh, a required image, for example, Python 3.4, if you want to pull that, yeah, it can pull it from uh, the cloud. And then how you can, of course, if you think you're, uh, uh, you know, you created an image that others can definitely use, you know, you can of course push it back into the registry and you can use this uh, image uh, as a template and uh, create any number of containers and run them, uh, you know, start and stop them and so on. So uh, this, is, uh, this is your, uh, you know, a quick summary and this is what we have covered so far. And now in this tutorial, let's actually look at uh, 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 installing this Docker on Windows. And I already mentioned about where you can get this. You can go to docker.com slash products slash Docker desktop or just Google search for Docker desktop for Windows if you're working on a Windows machine or for Mac or for Linux, okay? It's a very straightforward installation. Go ahead and download the file uh, and, and uh, install it. Now, once it's installed, uh, of course, here is the link. Once it's installed in your system tray on Windows machine, you should see this Docker icon. Uh, and uh, that means, uh, okay, well, at least it's installed. And if you hover your mouse over that, it basically says Docker desktop is running. If it says that, okay, another plus point, you know, okay, now that it is actually running, and of course, make sure when you click on it, you can open this dialog box, okay? When you, in fact, when you click on this Docker, these are all the options that it actually shows. Don't worry about any of these, well, at least for now. Just click on settings and go into share drives and make sure whatever the drive that you want to enable uh, is checked here. Sometimes, you know, uh, it may not work when you try to run, you know, certain commands. It probably says that, okay, you don't have permission or something, but uh, anyway, uh, if you kind of share the entire C drive, for example, uh, the only one I have here, uh, then uh, it, it's, it's a, in a way giving permissions to run Docker uh, from within these uh, local drives, okay? So I included this deliberately because uh, I went through this pain in the past, uh, initially when I installed Docker. Okay, so now uh, that you have the shared drive is available for, for your containers, now uh, let us test if Docker installation is running okay. So to do that, okay, uh, we'll do all the commands from the command prompt, Windows command prompt. In fact, I like uh, PowerShell better than Windows command prompt, so I'm using this and this is available in Windows 10. Uh, and of course, I should say Docker desktop works on Windows 10. On Windows, uh, previous versions of Windows, you have to go through some tricks to make it work. So don't even try that. I mean, uh, if you have an older version of Windows, I feel sad for you. Go ahead and upgrade it, get a new version, or work on a Mac or uh, Linux machine, okay? So this applies to Windows 10 or uh, later. So anywhere in the command prompt, you don't have to be in a specific directory, it doesn't matter. Uh, go ahead and uh, type docker run hello world, okay? Again, we run containers by uh, using the command docker run and this hello world actually, I believe it comes uh, along with uh, docker. So when I go ahead and run that, it should basically come back with a message saying, 
uh, this measure shows that your installation appears to be working successfully okay now I've actually uh, done this once that's why it says that okay hello from docker in fact if you if this is your first time running it then it would say something like unable to find a hello world locally so pulling it from the library hello world okay so if you if you run this for the first time it will pull the image but once it's it, it's already done on my system so I don't see that message so don't worry if you see that message in fact you should see that message if that's the first time you are uh, you're running docker run hello world okay uh, and as you can see here once the image is downloaded the next time you run the container it doesn't have to download it every time it's already there that's again another advantage it's the first time well a bit slow because it has to download this uh, image from the repository but the following times if you keep running the same container you don't have to download it again and again and again and it's pretty fast like you see uh, down here okay now, uh, so if, if this works fine, yeah, I mean, you'll see this message. This message shows that installation appears to be working correctly. There you go, we are done, okay? Now, uh, again, where is it downloading it from? Uh, it's down, I believe it's downloading uh, this from Docker Hub, which is the largest repository of images. Just type hub.docker.com and you'll, you'll go there and you can download any type of repositories uh, from there. Now, uh, I mean, of course, you can actually do Docker, for example, pull. You can pull a, uh, an image and you just type uh, Ubuntu and then it, it pulls the, I don't want to do it now because it takes a while to pull the entire thing. Uh, now, when you type this, it actually downloads only the latest version. So if you want a specific version of Ubuntu, which I recommend you always do when it comes to Docker, let's say you want to get Ubuntu 12.04, just type that and the reason why it's important is let's say five years from now when someone wants to run your container if you don't put specific version numbers then it tries to uh, uh, download the image from that point in time right so and we don't know what version and what type of dependencies the whole point of docker is you it's almost like a time capsule you know you put everything in there and no matter who uses it who runs it no matter when they work on this it should work all the time okay so that's why it's very important to put uh, the version numbers if you can okay uh, now what else can we do let's actually type uh, docker uh, images okay and this shows you all the images that you have on your system and I do have a few of these so if you see I did something a, a couple of days ago that says test Python module and uh, hello world is down here and docker images of course i'm only looking at the images right so i'm only looking at the docker uh, images now if you want to look at uh, let's say all the containers then you can actually type docker ps it shows all the running containers. I should not see anything right now because there is nothing running right now, okay? Some containers may take a while. While it's running, it shows you the list. If you wanna see all the containers that you have, it docker ps minus a, okay? That stands for, that tag stands for all, con uh, all the containers that you have here. And uh, uh, you can see that, okay, uh, 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 three minutes ago, there was a Docker container, uh, you know, uh, uh, hello world, and the name of that container is Pedantic Point Care. And this one is Cocky Swanson, Frosty Gagarin. The first time I saw this, how, what the heck is going on? Why do they have like so, all these weird names? Well, if you do not provide a specific name uh, for a container when you're running it, then it assigns a generic a unique name to these containers. Alternatively, you can actually provide a container uh, name so you can, I mean, in this example, I see I, I actually created a container with my name. That's why it says Srini over there. Okay, so these are a couple of quick commands to see, okay, uh, if Docker is working on your system and just a quick feel for uh, how this Docker environment looks like, okay? So just to recap, let me clear the screen to see Docker images, Docker images, okay? This will uh, show a list of all the images that you have. And uh, to have a look at all the containers, it's Docker PS uh, minus A. And by the way, uh, one thing I 
I probably should show you is, okay, we have a whole bunch of these images, but what if you want to clean up? Because these are taking up some room, right? I mean, if I expand this, you can actually, uh, let's clear the screen and run this uh, Docker images command again. You can see some of these uh, containers are like 1.2 gigabytes, 1.2 GB. So if you're not careful, it can eat up a lot of your uh, room, you know, uh, you know, on your hard drive. So uh, to remove a container, you can just uh, type your container ID, uh, or sorry, in this case, uh, I'm talking about images, uh, pretty much the same thing, image ID. So all you need to do is Docker, space rmi for container it's just rm for image it's rmi to remove a specific image and now you cannot just give like uh, the repository name you have to give it the image id okay so you see all these unique ids uh, uh, here so let's look at the hello world one and this is the id there and if i copy and if i paste it here well let me copy it again okay there copy and paste it over here and type it and uh, it should uh, say what did, what did it say that oh sorry it helps if you type it correctly d-o-c-k-e-r okay there you go okay so now it should say yeah uh, unable to delete must be forced images being uh, used by another container, a stopped container. Remember, we just created a container and it's used. So to remove an image, a Docker image, you have to remove all the containers, corresponding containers. So if I actually look at Docker uh, PS minus A, now I can look at all the containers that correspond to this Docker, right? I mean, this is hello world. So uh, the hello world, this is one container right there. So let's actually, uh, docker remove is rm okay let's remove this one for example let me copy paste and uh, it should remove that container hopefully so that one is gone okay so are there any other hello worlds okay there is another one up here you can actually again control c uh, docker remove space type it and then it should remove that and if I remove all my hello worlds, then, uh, sorry, let me clear the screen again. Uh, now let's uh, look at Docker images again, and let's try this command one more time. Docker RMI, where is my hello world? Right down here, okay? So there you go, and let's see if it deletes it. Okay, so now you see it actually deleted that uh, now if I type docker images you see the hello world the hello world one is gone it's not there anymore okay now uh, it may sound like okay there are too many steps too much going on you can force remove something I think it says uh, if you remember it said okay use the tag minus F if you want to remove it now one thing I learned uh, if you want to remove all stopped containers okay then you just need to type uh, docker rm uh, another you know a dollar sign docker ps minus a minus q okay so now let me go ahead and run this and uh, it probably takes a little while so all of those containers are completely deleted now how do i know to type this Again, I just did a Google search because I was tired of doing one by one. So I just did a good, quick Google search and I found this and I'm sharing it with you now, okay? So now if we go to Docker PS uh, uh, is, uh, sorry, minus A, now we should probably see something empty over there. Yeah, so there is nothing. Remember, we had a whole bunch of containers there. So I killed all of those containers right now. Now I can easily go and, uh, uh, and, and remove any of the images that I don't want in there. So these are a few, I believe, uh, useful commands that uh, you'll need to get started with Dockers. So, uh, so hopefully it works on your system and hopefully you get a bit familiar with this because uh, in the next tutorial, I'm gonna talk about, okay, writing a few lines of code in Python, but then how do we Dockerize that piece of code so uh, we can go ahead and share uh, that container. We, so we can go ahead and containerize it and uh, share it with uh, others. 
so uh, keep watching these and uh, please subscribe to my channel because it encourages me to create more content thank you very much and let's meet in the next tutorial